Passion comes in many forms. People express it in numerous ways, but the guys that work here at RPM Technic, well, they express their passion through the medium of Porsche. We came down to have a quick look to see how the company started and at their very own take on the 911, the CSR. I set up RPM in a one car lockup on a farm about a mile away from here. With the Porsche background I had, it was always about doing Porsches, but when you start off, you can't just open up and service Porsches, you've got to build a reputation. So I used to do Volkswagen Audi Group cars. Um, and then I was moved from there on the same farm into an old cow shed. And it was one of those like, wow, how am I going to fill this? And within a couple of years, it was full. And we had three ramps in there. Uh, in 2006, Darren uh, joined. He was a customer to start with, and then he liked what I was doing. Um, I was getting a bit fed up with working all the hours and not having someone to share the responsibility. And uh, yeah, Darren and I have been working together since then. From that point, we expanded our technician base. We put more ramps into the cow shed um, and put more tooling in and engine building facility. Uh, and over time, we, we integrated all of the equipment that we needed to run a first-rate Porsche servicing specialist. We do servicing, we do sales, we do track day preparation, we do track day support, we do race support, we do the GT3 uh, Cup car that we're supporting this year. I grew up around Porsches. My old man had, a, I think, a 944 S2 when I was born, probably, giving away my age a little bit there. Um, and, yeah, ever since I've been a kid, uh, I've been around them, friends of the family have had them, and then as soon as I had enough money to scrape together for a good car, I had an old battered 964. And yeah, it's just in the blood, I think, really. I'd get up in the morning and I love coming to work, and my wife laughs that I'd come to work seven days a week, which is spot on, you know, I, I love it. Uh, my first word was car, and my dad had 911s when I was a kid growing up, so it was always about you know, you always look up to your dad, don't you? It's like, he's the ultimate, and he had a Porsche, so that was, that's where it came from, really. People love their cars, and we love their cars. You know, we're very fortunate in, in what we get to work with and, and the people we meet, because people don't, you know, people don't buy a Porsche generally as an A to B car. You know, it's a, there's a lot of love and passion that goes into the purchase, so it's great to share that experience with people, you know? We've always sort of done cars up and had our own track toys and stuff like that. And what we found was, you know, the GT3 is, you know, it's a fantastic car, but it doesn't have back seats. So we thought, well, there's, there's, a, there's a sort of a gap in the earlier cars for that type of vehicle, something that's capable on track. So you can finish work on a Friday afternoon, nip up to Bedford for a track evening, buzz around for the afternoon and then come home and then the next morning take everyone out. RPM say this is a halfway house between a GT3 and a standard Carrera S, and you know what? It is. You can take someone out here and they won't have their teeth, well, destroyed by bone-shattering suspension. At the same time, when you're on it in this, it feels really good. And what they've done to the suspension with the diff, you can put it into a corner, you can give it some, and, well, it'll reward you rather than punish you. It's not a jittery car, it makes you feel safe, it makes you feel happy, it makes you feel comfortable. With the CSRs, we, we don't take cars and add more speed by just putting a turbocharger on it and getting a load more horsepower and then chucking it out there and going, there you go, look how fast that goes. We look at it in a different concept. We're looking at trying to take what Porsche have already put out there and then tweaking it with the best of the suspension setups, the best of the drivetrain options, and just making the very best of what is essentially a good platform. First of all, we rebuilt the engine um, for reliability, basically, because we knew it was going to do a lot of track work, so we, we strengthened the engine. Um, it's got a lightweight clutch and flywheel to make it more responsive, get rid of the dual mass. Lightweight clutch and flywheel just 
just a great upgrade because it just it allows that engine to rev that much freer. Um, the, again, the lack of um, inertia to the engine uh, does have a positive effect on um, not just performance but also on um, fuel economy. And when that car fires up in the morning, cold start, and it's boom, and it revs up to 3,000 and back down again, you're aware that that's, that's a good modification to put to your car. Um, that combined with the sports exhaust system that the car's running as well, um, that's a custom CSR exhaust that we, we had built for that car. Although we weren't going for any power gains, um, when we dynoed it, it was about 20 horsepower over standard, so we're quite pleased with that. Um, it's got an Olin's road and track suspension kit on it, which is adjustable. Um, it's got some poly bushing, but not all. And it's got standard top mounts. We didn't go for the solid GT3 top mounts to keep that comfort factor with it. Uh, it's also got um, a limited slip diff, which is very important for the drivability of it. Um, it's got carbon fiber ducktail to remove weight from the right place and a bit of styling. You know, we wanted to make it stand out, but not obtrusively so. You know, we want it to look like a car that Porsche would have made. I think, I guess, I've, probably one of our best compliments was um, people going and saying, well, which model's that? You know, they, they, they genuinely thought that car had rolled out of, uh, out of the factory. They say that this thing costs about 40 grand if you leave it to them to buy a donor car and let them do the work on it, 45 if you do an engine rebuild as well. And for the money, that doesn't sound too bad because at the end of the day, you get admittedly a slightly stiffly sprung 911, but you also get one that feels amazing on your favorite road. What these guys have done to the handling is just, it is magic. What RPM have done is they've exploited everything they've learned, everything they know, all the engineering tips and tricks they've picked up over the years and made the car that Porsche couldn't. I suppose the direct comparison would be to the, uh, to the 997 GTS, which was kind of the greatest hits collection. It had a bit more power, the springs were a little bit differently set up, but this feels more hard-edged than that. Personally, it might be a little bit too harshly set up for me. That said, I am dying to take it onto a track. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you want a car that can feasibly do everything and have back seats and be a track car and make you smile every day, this is a very, very viable solution. It's, it's a really great car. And all the detailing they've done to it as well, all the CSR badging, everything feels Porsche. It feels like it could maybe have been stock. Every morning I wake up and I'm excited to go to work. And that is still now, you know, even what we 13, 12, 13 years on. It's, uh, you know, like I say, the product we work with, the people we meet, um, just love it. It's never, never a dull day.